Chrissy Swan Show. Yes, indeed. Thanks to Priceline Pharmacy. Hello, Jack. Good afternoon. I've got a smug uh, announcement to make. Okay. You know I'm obsessed with my Fitbit. Yep. I get obsessed with things. Have you noticed? Yeah, you and I both have obsessive personalities, but yours, yours more so. You're, you you really get obsessed with stuff. I think you're right. And also, my obsessions last a long time. Yeah. Like, my love of my Fitbit has been going for many, many years because I like to track. I like to see the stats. Yeah. yeah? And also, I like to earn the little badges that you get. <laughs> you like a grade six. <laughs> exactly like a grade six. Uh, pop quiz. Yeah. Because, you know, it measures your sleep as well. And, you know, I'm obsessed with sleep. You are. Guess what time I nodded off last night. I was in bed before this, but what, what time did I actually... What what time was I out? We were texting at, like, around 7. I want to mm-hmm. say 8.30. 9 p.m. Okay. And what time did I rouse? 6.30 a.m. Oh, you got over nine hours. I got eight hours and 49 minutes because I had to get up and do a wee in the middle. That's a win. Eight hours and 49 minutes. Yeah. And I've got my mental health walk in already today. Can you see the difference in my mood? Yeah, you're calm. I'm calm. Chaotic Chris is not here today. <laughs> I don't worry. There's plenty of room for some lady madness. The Chrissy Swan Show. Chrissy's Clickbait. Yes, what has piqued my attention? Well, of course, whenever I see the name Harry Styles, that is an immediate click. And he's all over the news because yesterday he won the Grammy. In his speech, he said this. This doesn't happen to people like me very often and this is so, so nice. Thank you very, very much. And that's caused an uproar. People Jack. aren't happy. People are not happy because people say such honours often hap- happen to white men yeah. like Harry Styles. Of course, I can't hear a bad word about him. I was going to say, I knew you would defend him on this one. I do defend him because I have feelings for him and I'm pretty sure they're real. <laughs> uh, no, I love Harry Styles. I love what he stands for. And I think when I heard that, because I heard it before the funeral. Yep. And I thought, oh, what he means is a guy from humble beginnings, as in from a boy band, which is often the laughing stock of the yeah. music industry. And uh, on a reality show. And on a reality, exactly, on a Born reality show. from a show. reality show. That's right, because they were on like... Uh, X Factor. Uh, X Factor, that's right. Yeah, so I think that's what he means. Correct. You know, someone that started off in such a, well, not very reputable way, ending up you know, being as successful acknowledged, as he is. acknowledged by the Grammys. Like mm. it doesn't get better than that. And in those situations, you'd be so nervous. You know, someone like when you're delivering a speech like that, you don't know what you're saying. Of course, I think he came across as really overwhelmed and humble. And sit down if you're going to say anything <laughs> bad about Harry Styles. Now here is a hybrid segment. You think you're in Chrissy's clickbait, but you're actually in Chrissy's massive. Tips. Yes, indeed, because I saw another article with the headline, Winner of Australia's Best Beef Burger Crowned. And frankly, I don't remember receiving the call. <laughs> <laughs> I make the best burgers. You do. Um, apparently, there's a man behind Australia's Best Burger, blah, blah, blah. He's on the Gold Coast, whatever. <laughs> don't want to know about it. The shade. <laughs> yeah, because I make the best burgers. You do, but we've not tried this, guys. It doesn't matter. You don't need to. And you can make your own at home. And I'm going to give you Chrissy's massive tip right now. Go to your butcher. Mm-hmm. Go to your butcher. First stop and say, I would like, repeat after me, Jack, I would like. I would like. One kilo. One kilo. Of course, ground chuck. Of course, ground chuck. And then go home and you make it into patty shapes and you cook it on a very hot plate and that is the best burger you're ever going to have. What's chuck? It's a, it's a cut of meat. Oh. And it's normally not great, right? This is not going to cost you an arm and a leg. But when you coarse ground it, mwah! And coarse grounding is just smashing it all together. Well, he don't know the butcher does oh, it. Oh, the coarse ground is how I've just purchased it. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. You might have to go and buy some other bits and bobs and come back. But it's worth it. The Chrissy Swan Show. For all your health and beauty products and advice you can count on, visit Priceline Pharmacy. Priceline has a massive range of brands at great everyday prices. Whatever you're after, you'll find it at Priceline Pharmacy. Hurry into your nearest Priceline Pharmacy or check out Priceline.com.au. The Chrissy Swan Show. How very day. Yeah, last week we heard from Deb. 
Oh, that was a ripper. It was a ripper. And I do believe that that won the Priceline voucher. I've got one for you if you can outdo Deb. Deb's story was uh, she was running a second-hand store like you do at a market or whatever, throwing out all your old rubbish. Yeah. And she was she had some old bottles of hair dye. <laughs> <laughs> on the table. The idea that you're reselling hair dye is incredible. Well, you know, it was a good lesson for me because I've got a couple of boxes at home that I haven't used and I thought, oh, look, I probably I won't sell them. I'll give them <laughs> no, away to yeah. somebody I love. Uh, so she had them out on the trestle table, five bucks a pop, obviously. Two girls came past and said out loud in front of Deb, God, if I was her, I wouldn't be selling that hair dye. I'd be <laughs> using it to disguise the skunk. How very dare How you. very dare. 13, 24, 10, if you can outdo Deb. How's this one? I found it online. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you order stuff, you've got to give a name. They always get your name wrong. Yeah. Whenever I'm in Bali and I order a coffee, I get Kirsty or Crystal or Crystal, or, whatever. Or Chrissy with a Y. Yeah, that Chrissy, still annoys Chrissy me. Chrissy with a Y. I know it upsets you. It's I-E, everybody. You've been around <laughs> long enough. Your name's C- on a billboard. C-H-R-I-S-S-I-E. But you can't, you can't sweat the small stuff unless you are this guy who went and ordered a 24-piece family meal. Yum. At a recipe called... At, at a place, a restaurant called Wingstop in Texas. And it arrived. And on the receipt... It's all, all in order. No worries. 24-piece family. Classic. Louisiana. Public classic. Blah, blah, blah. Name. <laughs> <laughs> what? His name's Brian, by the okay. way. <laughs> Name on order. Fatty. <laughs> How very dare. Oh, that's savage. How very dare you. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he brought it up with Brianna, the girl who wrote it. He's like, come on, you can't. I know, he went back. He said, oh, you I'd can't want the do ground that. to swallow me whole if I was old Brianna. I know. And no, she came at him. She said, listen, I'm here by myself. I'm working as hard as I can. I just had to quickly write something down. I saw it and I said it. Fatty. <laughs> God damn you, she Brianna. She doubled down. Just say something else. Like... Is he wearing a sports jacket? Yeah. You know, khaki shoes? Adidas. Not fatty. No, that's savage. Not fatty. That is... How very dare you? How very dare you? The Chrissy Swan Show. We have been inundated by calls for how very dare you. We're going to need a whole show very dare to get through them. When has someone said something to you that has absolutely got you Shook. Jamie, Jamie, you are live. Are you there, Jamie? Hi, Chrissy. How are you? Oh, you sound like you're far away. Hang on. Oh, that- I've got your throat to my ear. That's our fault. We've got you on speakerphone. Jamie, are you there? Are you there? Jamie? Are you on there? Oh, we haven't been on long. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> no, you're right. All right, Jamie, hit it. When have you had to say how very dare you? I had the good old classic just after baby number three. It was about six months postpartum. Bumped into a friend I hadn't seen for a while, and I got the "Oh my God, you're pregnant again." <laughs> I mean, I was not. You were not. I was what? feeling quite good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that, that really popped that balloon. Well, yeah, you would have been really rocking a little outfit. You've you've sorted out maybe the baby's sleeping a bit now at six That's months. It. I felt so good after baby number three. I felt like a bit 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 worse for baby one and two. Not too sure about how my body was looking, but after three, I was confident. <laughs> and then, yeah, that. <laughs> God damn it. She mustn't have been a very close friend to not know that you weren't pregnant yeah, again. Surely no, you would have told it, someone. We haven't spoken since. <laughs> <laughs> how how very dare. dare you. Fiona, Fiona, come in, Hello. Spinner. Hi. No. How are you going? When have you I, had to um, say to someone, how very dare you? Well, it was my mum. <laughs> um... <gasps> She said to me one day, this was a, a few years ago, she said, oh, you don't need to come around every weekend because <laughs> I was going around there quite often. And she said, oh, I said, why? She said, oh, because I want to spend time with your sister. And I went, oh, <laughs> you lived with her. Oh, <laughs> Fiona, this <laughs> is a very Yeah, so that put me right out for quite some time and then I just decided not to turn up for two weeks and it's like, well, where are you? Why aren't you here? <laughs> this is deeply <laughs> insulting, Fiona. <laughs> Because yeah, I, I think was is your mum a bit older? Yeah. And 
Uh, look, I, I, I don't want to put words in your she mouth. Didn't ma- she didn't mean anything by it, but it was just the way she said it threw me off completely. It was like, oh, my gosh. I, okay. think it's, I think it's fair to be offended when someone looks you in the eye and says, you don't need to come around so often. <laughs> you don't need to. <laughs> and your own mother. <laughs> your own mother. I tell you what, you've got a Priceline voucher with your name on it, Fee, and you are oh, forbidden. You. you are forbidden <laughs> to share it with that nasty old woman. <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. What's my name? Who is it? Chrissy Swans. Who am I? I've got five hundred dollars in front of me. I am yet to give away the full five hundred. Jack. I just don't think we ever will. <laughs> People need to be better at guessing. No, it brings you joy. It does. I love it. Why do you... What's what's happened to you? I don't know, but people losing radio competitions just <laughs> makes me laugh. You are a terrible, <laughs> bad man. Tamika from Adelaide. Hello, Tamika. Hello, Christy. I'm really hoping that you're our first, that you get the full $500. Are you ready? I am. This is how it works. I've got five clues here about a particular celebrity. But every time you get one wrong, Tamika, Jack personally is going to steal $100 out of your wallet. Got it? Uh, I get that. That's fair. That's fair. (laughs) Thanks, Tamika. Tamika gets it. (laughs) Clue number one. I am a classically trained musician. Classically trained. Oh, God, Tamika. Oh. Damn. Sorry. Sorry. That's okay. $400. (laughs) $400. Jack, can you hear the glee in his voice, Tamika? He's so excited. I love it. I can't even be mad. You can't be mad. I know. Me neither. I'm powerless. Clue number two for $400, Tamika. The name you know me as isn't my real name. Is it Beethoven? <laughs> I love that as a guess, but you're incorrect. <laughs> Where did you t- Beethoven? <laughs> oh, Nova. God, I wish it was. <laughs> Same. Tamika, I wish it was Beethoven. <laughs> I'm glad I made you laugh. Tamika, I would get in so much trouble if it was Beethoven. I tried to get Boz Skaggs up for the sing-along and I nearly got fired. Imagine if I was talking about Beethoven. All right. All right, down to $300. (laughs) It is not Beethoven. (laughs) My flute, Sasha Flute, is named after Beyonce's alter ego. So this person is a classically trained flautist. Oh, my gosh. I have no idea. You don't know who um, plays the flute? No, she doesn't no. know. She said she's got oh no my idea. God, Jack, just relax. <laughs> $200. <laughs> he's, he's quick on the yoinking, isn't he? He's I agree. Really he I, was too quick on the yoinking. No, because she said, I've got no idea, so I'm not just going to hear and like, watch the grass grow. <laughs> For $200, Tamika. I won record of the year at the Grammys yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's not Beyonce, is it? No. Oh, oh, come on. No, that wasn't a question. That was... She plays the flute. Yes, I think I know who it is now. Who is it? Um, is it uh, Lizzo? <gasps> yes, Tamika! Check my nails. <laughs> You're feeling $200 richer, my girl. Yes, thank you. And if you want to win big like Tamika and have some shade thrown at you <laughs> <laughs> by Jack, register your details on the Nova Player. That's how we came across Tamika. The Chrissy Swan Show. Got a little article here I want to take you through. Shoot. Residents next to huge poo pipes say that they've been woken by waste being flushed. This oh. is, I know, this is over in North Hampshire in the UK. Residents have been left struggling to sleep. Leap due to the sound of waste being flushed through a nearby sewerage that pipe. It's, is rank. It's rank. It's temporary, apparently. Right. And to make up for it, uh, the council uh, sent around some food hampers, oh. which is a very thoughtful gift that when is. you think about it. It is, because the recipients get to enjoy the contents twice. Once when they eat it, and secondly, when it rattles down <laughs> the pipe next to the bathroom the next day. The Chrissy Swan Show. Gonna need your help. The question is, who ruined your wedding? It's probably an unpopular opinion and a sweeping statement, but I think most weddings. I've just muted myself. Oh, good. I just hit a button. Am I still in there? Uh, you just turned your own microphone off. 
Oh Look my god, you, I'm so smart. <laughs> um, I've no idea how I did that, and I couldn't do it again if you asked me to. I think most weddings end badly, um, and basically prove me wrong. Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. Who ruined your wedding? On the weekend, I was staying at some accommodation, which also doubles as a wedding venue. And at about four o'clock in the afternoon, I believe that was when the wedding kicked off. I saw everybody getting out on their little white chairs. It was beautiful. And the strains of a song which I didn't recognise came on. It was this one. And I was like, I don't know this song, but I like it. And I shazammed it from my hotel room. Oh, I love that. Pointed it at the wedding party. And it's Miley Cyrus from 2013. A very young Miley. A very young Miley. That it's voice. called Adore You, Spotify, whatever. It's excellent. And then so that they were all, that, that was the sort of wedding march. And then uh, they left. They did the vows and whatever. There's lots of tears and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I'm, I'm jaded. Yeah. And, uh, and then they left to Vance Joy. The fire and the flood. And I was sitting there with my, you know, broken dreams. Be like. <laughs> Having never been married, going, I don't know if I would have chosen those. <laughs> You'll be divorced in a year. <laughs> <laughs> no, wedding and weddings and love is a beautiful thing, Jack. <laughs> Come on, between you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, then um, I left them to their partying and I went to do the job that I had to do. And then I came back at 11 p.m., which is, as you oh. know, curfew yeah. for any sort of... I heard the last song, which I believe was Offspring, and there was lots of laughing and carrying on. And then, after the last song, I heard, Let me at it! <laughs> Let me at it! Caitlin, come here! Oh. And then I heard a man... That was a woman's voice. And then a man's voice going, Holy, stand down! Come back! Don't do it! <laughs> so, we've all been there. Did you tell Carl and Michael Clark to go <laughs> home? <laughs> I got out my video and I'm going to make a mozza from the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> no, I just thought... I was laying in my bed having a cup of tea and I thought, Oh, God. It was always going to end this way. Most weddings they do. They always do. They always do. Or there's a family fight, like an internal sort of there's brewing family always fight. always something. There's always something. And I want to hear from you. Who ruined your wedding? Was it Haley? Was it Caitlin? Stand down! <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Who ruined your wedding? I heard a fantastic fight on Saturday night that went like this. Let me at it! Let me at it! Where's <laughs> Caitlin? And then a guy going, Haley, step down! A step down! <laughs> <laughs> There's always Full one. Bogan. There's always one. I love it. Laura, Laura, who ruined? Chrissy. Hi. Chrissy, I'm so happy to hear your voice on the radio. Again. I'm happy to hear you. yours. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me, Laura. Um, this was my first wedding, so mm. I was 20 in England, and my mother and father hadn't spoken for about uh, 10, 15 years, mm. and my mum said to me, if he talks to me, I'll set fire to him. This is at the service <laughs> while I'm standing there in my dress. Please stop for a minute. That is an excellent, <laughs> an excellent retort. If he talks to me, I'm going to set him on fire. She also said, if his mother speaks to me, I'll set her on fire as well. That was my granny. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but during the speeches, so the video's running, everything, She he stood up to do his father's speech, and my mother squeaked her chair out, stood up where she was sitting, got a handful of crystals out of her pocket and cleansed her aura at the table so that his evil couldn't get to her during the speech. And that's on my wedding video for the rest of your life, you know. She just, she's just a real special character. Laura, that is so fantastic. <laughs> that reminds me, actually, at my... Be- I had a huge 40th birthday party. It was epic. And my dad gave a speech and the whole time my mum sat in the audience... <laughs> you know ostensibly listening but she was on her phone the whole time and when i looked over my shoulder uh, her shoulder to have a look what she was doing she was playing candy crush oh my god <laughs> savage yes patty <laughs> <laughs> savage patty swan that is such a great story i'm going to give you a, a price line voucher for that laura because oh that's gorgeous Thank you. you know it might go my- might go some of the way for having that woman as a mother. Uh, Lauren, Lauren, tell us who ruined your wedding. 
Hey, Gritty. Great to be speaking to you. I had a guest at my wedding who was an Elvis fanatic, and she organised for an Elvis impersonator, who I don't like Elvis, but she organised for an Elvis <laughs> impersonator to come to my wedding, and he was later kicked out for doing something naughty at my wedding, and we got into trouble for it. Oh, I really want to know what the something... I'm looking at... No. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. So it was something in the bathroom that wasn't going to the toilet. Is that right, Lauren? Mm-hmm. That is correct. Con- and he wasn't very good either. He was he was a terrible Elvis impersonator, but... <laughs> what was your friend thinking, organising that sort of loose cannon Elvis impersonator? I don't know. And she even knew. I don't even like Elvis. <laughs> My question yeah. to you is this. Who actually ruined your wedding? Was it the Elvis impersonator or was it your friend yeah. for organising <laughs> the Elvis impersonator? Good, good. Good question, Chrissy. Good question. I reckon it was probably my friend for organising him in the first place. I think we have a, we have a bit of a laugh about him now. That is an unbelievable story. Price I voucher for you, Lauren. The Chrissy Swan Show. I took all my kids uh, over to America mm. uh, for the Christmas holidays, and it was amazing. It looked away. It was eye opening in so many ways. But what you don't realise, because it was the first really big holiday that we've ever done, are all the little. Memories and funny in jokes that of that course. happened. It w- it was magical, and uh, we went out for dinner in San Francisco to a restaurant called King Key. It was so delicious. It was Chinese, and we went twice because my middle son Kit is mad for Shao Long Bao, the soup dumplings, yeah. and he just said to me, "Listen, it's been weeks. We've been on the <laughs> road. I've eaten fries and burgers, and I just need a Shao Long Bao." So I googled it. Turns out, I found a great restaurant. It was so good. We went there twice. King Key. The woman at King Key, okay, so this was, it was a reasonably like a medium sized restaurant. It wasn't a tiny little hole in the wall, wasn't a barn, but it was a, b- a busy restaurant. Yeah. There was one woman running it, and I'm talking, she would answer the phone and take the phone orders. She took the reservations, she had a reservation book, she had the Uber Eats meals to wow. hand to the Uber Eats deliverers, she had people coming in that did pick up. Was she running to the tables, running food? She was across everything. We would watch her in in awe because she was also sitting the people at the tables, taking their orders, getting the food there, topping up the waters, making sure all the sauces match the entrees. One woman. What a tight-ass owner. It was, well, it was her business. So oh. she's only got herself to blame, but she was totally across it. And we've had a few, you know, moments where we've been busy or I've been multitasking or something. And, you know, we've, we've mentioned the, the woman from King, King Key. Key. No one's okay. busier than the woman from <laughs> King Key. And this morning, it was a particularly busy morning at home. And as you know, I, I pander to my children's culinary desires. And Leo decided he wants shack sugar. Don't at me. Well, shak sugar. Shak sugar is a, a Middle Eastern shak baked sugar. egg. Oh. I know. I mean, How the, f- the fact know. your kids know what shak sugar is. And to request it on a Tuesday morning. Completely your fault. Anyway, it is. I've, I've, what, what do they say? I've made a rod for my own back. Yeah. So I just thought, look, I can actually make this. I, I can make you shak sugar. So I got out the special shak sugar bowl and I cracked the eggs in. I baked them on a high heat. Anyway, oh. at the same time, I was cooking him a chicken fillet for lunch because he's mad on protein at the moment. Of he's co- a teenager, right? So he's, you know, building up that bod. Yeah. And so I was cooking him a chicken fillet, had the shuck sugar in. I was trimming strawberries for their lunches because I bought a whole pun- a whole crate. So it's like you're having strawberries every day. I was slicing a banana into a yogurt bowl for Peg for... Far out. I know. And there was a lot going on. And Peg's sitting at the table and she looks over and she goes, oh my God, are you my mother? Or are you the woman from King Key? <laughs> <laughs> now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.